Okay, good evening and welcome to the Tewksbury Conservation Committee meeting of February 24th, 2021. I'll call the meeting to order. Due to recent open meeting laws policies set forth by the governor, this, uh, during the state of emergency, this meeting will be held virtually. Uh, there are public hearings on this agenda, so the phone number to participate is 781-565-8134. I'll, I'll mention that before each, when we announce each of the public hearings. All right, first order of business is approval of minutes. I see none, so uh, Stefan, you didn't have any minutes? minutes. No minutes? Okay, uh, now I'm going to move on to all the agenda items that are being continued so we can do it in one false swoop. All right, item A is continued from uh, February 10th, 2021. Request certificate of compliance, New Horizons Realty, Group LLC 21, I mean 1201 Main Street, Map 60, Lot 39, DEP number 305. 997, you have requested a continuance to March 10th, 2021. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a second. Second. Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Item B is continued public hearing. From February 10th, 2021, public hearing notice of intent for Francesca Land LLC, care of Joseph Cataldo, 913 E Street, Map 102, Lot 52, DEP number 3051122. This applicant has requested a continuance to the March 10th, 2021 meeting. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan? Aye. Mr. Walsh? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Item C, continue public hearing, notice of intent, Michael Saccone, MDR Construction Company, Incorporated, 935 Main Street, Map 49, Lot 69, DEP number 3051126. This applicant is also requesting a continuance to our March 10th, 2021 meeting. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a second. Second. Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. I am going to skip over item D for one second. Go on to item E. Uh, it's a public hearing notice of intent, Adi Martel, 920 and 978 Livingston Street, map, lot 72-2 and 63-51, DEP number is pending. The applicant is requesting a continuance to our March 10th meeting, 2021. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Now we're gonna skip back to item D, public hearing notice of intent, Mark Harrison, 140 Helvetia Street, map 60, lot 11, DEP number 3051129. This is a public hearing. If you wanna participate, the phone number is 781-565-8134. Um, is there anyone here for this? Yes, I'm on Mark Harrison. Okay. Um, are you here by yourself, Mark? Uh, my Bob Prokop was on the phone. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. The floor is yours. Yep. Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Um, yeah. Hello. This again. I'm, I'm Bob Prokop from Equipment Consulting Services. Um, the applicant is seeking to put in a house addition. Uh, the entire lot is within the riverfront area. It's what might be considered a channelized stream, but I still consider it riverfront. But the whole lot's within the riverfront area. And um, the, the house would be built 
just outside the 50 foot no build. Um, would be built slightly. Uh, uh, what let's do is I'll put in a, a, a two car garage. Uh, and uh, they have to change the uh, configuration of the driveway. As a result, a small portion of the driveway is also in the new, new, uh, no build zone. Um, and um, erosion control would, would surround, the, surround the work area. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, if that makes any sense. So, and I, I, I can't see the plans because I, I, I have to do this on, on the phone. Um, but you should already have copies of all the, all the, all the, all the stuff. Okay. I think we do. Uh, for some reason, my headset is not working. Okay, uh, Brian, can you hear me? Uh, yep, I can hear you fine. Okay. okay, I'm not sure if my, I'm not receiving anything. I don't know if I have to use this speaker on the way out. Um, okay, Stefania, any issues? Um, so I had sent my concerns in an email to that applicant and the consultant. I forwarded that to the commission, so you have that. And um, okay. they submitted some documents to answer a lot of my questions. Um, so with what they submitted um, after my comments, I, I think I'm all set now. Okay, good, good. Uh, again, um, I'm going to read this phone number one more time before I get to board members, just in case there is somebody. Brian, you're, you're able to take calls with the other person still on the line? Yep, if I get another call, I can hold them until we need to bring them in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is repeat the number, 781-565-8134. This is a public hearing. Um, all right, board members, any questions? I have no questions. I have a question about the ordering vegetated wetlands um where am i I'm trying to find the exact thing um in the existing conditions um it says that there are no uh, there are no bordering vegetated wetlands um, are present stefania when you went on a site visit um was there snow on the ground because looking at the pictures it looks like there's Know, vegetated wetlands on either side of the stream and my concern is that that would push every you know all the buffer zones out a little bit yeah so when i went to the site it was completely covered in snow um so it's hard to tell from of course because there was a foot of snow out there it looks like it it would be bank and then um mon i know i've been out to this property years ago for beaver issues because there used to be beaver dams in this stream and i do remember that the i don't know if the homeowner owned it back then but there was lawn and then there was the stream um but i cannot confirm at this time if there is actually bordering vegetated wetland that borders mm -hmm. on this stream but wasn't wasn't it the delineation from the top of the bank? Yeah, that's what the um, application states. Yep. Right. Oh. I would, so, uh, I think the top of the bank, and it's going down the bank, is where you're going to find the wetland area. I think you're considering. All right. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, this is Bob Prokop again. Yeah. When I was out there, I was out there on uh, January twelfth. Wasn't any snow at that time and such. And it, it was basically just the top of the bank. There might be a fringe and, and a very narrow fringe right along the stream, but it really wasn't up there. So uh, I just I so I just flagged the top of the bank and then we took our measurements from there. All right, All right thank you. 
Okay. Any other members with any comments? Hearing none, uh, I just have a couple of comments. Um, I see where you have the erosion control. Yes. I would like the erosion control to go a little bit more closer to the part where it says deck. I just really want it just further beyond where the construction is going to be. I mean, right now you butt up right against to where the construction begins. So if you get it closer to that set of stairs, I think would be a more reasonable. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. And there's, also, there's a playground in the backyard by the deck. Yeah, uh, we could do easy to the, the erosion control to that playground area. But just, just, but again, just so you know, all that area is is really is just the existing uh, the existing driveway and lawn. So there's nothing there. The playground is outside, outside the uh, 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 the erosion control area. But we can we can tighten that up. I don't. That shouldn't be a big deal. And then yeah, there's a soil pile in case they need to do some, you know, temporarily you know, stockpile some soil when they excavate. Uh, well, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the other side. The other side. If you look at the rear of the house. Oh, wait a moment. On, on the, um, the, uh, uh, the left side of the house? It will be to the left side of the house. And in in, if you look, there's a deck with a set of stairs coming off. There's a, a rough draft. That erosion control yeah. only goes to the beginning of the construction. Yeah, well, they're not doing anything over there. There's, there's no work proposed over that area. Do you want to extend the erosion control? I just want, yes. I want the erosion control extended because when you're building stuff, stuff kind of flies all over the place. Um, well, yes, the erosion control should absolutely be extended past the proposed addition. And that's something that we can definitely condition that I have to approve that location. Um, it shouldn't okay. be an issue to extend that. Yeah, 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 that that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, yeah, we can just extend it. What's it going on over there? The deck is stuff. Now I have one more issue, and Stefan, you can help me out if you can here. Is that shed in the right location? Uh yeah, I think so. It looks okay. like it's pretty run down. It's probably very old. <laughs> but it's in the it's in the twenty five foot no disturb zone, correct? Yeah. It most likely is from where it is on site. Yeah. I, I don't know when the shed was built, uh, so that was there when I when I was out there. So. Okay. Um, the shed was there when I purchased the house in 2008. And the house was built in 1972, but I don't I don't know when the shed was built, so I I, I can't answer that. That's all right. Bad. All right. Other than that, I have no issues. Uh, the ship was probably built when the house was built. So uh, again, it's all it's all lawn right there, one way or another. Just just so you know. But it's still on that no disturb zone. That's what's bothering me. Yeah, I, know. I, I, I can let that slide. Um, 
might be pre-existing, but I, I can't answer that. All right, Brian, any phone callers? No other calls at the moment. Okay, board member, any other issues? Going once, going twice. All right, it's already gone. Okay, I'm going to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So Can I have moved. a motion? Can I have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Um, Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, and chair votes aye as well. Um, now, in regards to the... The motion to approve the notice of intent for Mark Harris at 140 Helvetia Street, Map 60, Lot 11, DEP number 3051129, with the standard order of conditions and the condition that Stefania uh, approve the uh, erosion control before construction begins. Um, can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All right, Mr. Ronan, I mean, Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? All right. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you, guys and gals. <laughs> you. I don't know. All right. Let's see what's next. All right, uh, next on the agenda is item F. It's a public hearing. Notice of intent, Roger Gauthier, Tewksbury Hospital, DPH, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 630 East Street, Map 89, Lot 1, DEP number pending. Just so the applicant is aware that we will not be taking a vote on this tonight because of the lack of the DEP number. Um, it is a public hearing, so the telephone number is 781-565-8134. Any interested parties who want to be involved in this issue, you can call that number. Is there anyone here for this? Hi, um, I'm Eric Wilhelmson, CDW Consultants, representing the, uh, the applicant. It looks very unusual. Okay. I'm also, here, yep. I'm also here with uh, Roger. Yeah. Yep. Okay, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, so this project is primarily to replace a broken water line. There is a water line that comes from the pump house. It crosses through the wetlands, crosses the stream, and exits out of the wetland area and connects back up into a water line that runs through the large field that's off to the the uh, west of the site. So the water line has apparently broken to the south of the stream to the west side of the access road. And when they turn on the pump for that particular line, so they can see the you know, ground swelling up and the water bubbling up. So it's definitely broken. We looked at three alternatives to replace the fix with this pipe break. The first one is going into the wetland itself to where the pipe is apparently broken, digging it up, finding the break, splicing in a new line. Uh, that obviously would require work in, within the wetland itself. And it's a bit of a band-aid approach. If you just fix that break, you might be creating another break somewhere else and have to come back again and, and fix it in other places as it crosses the wetland. Which brings you to replacing the entire water line either to its full extent through the wetland and underneath the stream, or as, or as have we proposed, putting the water line down the access road over the existing stream crossing, getting past the wetlands, turning off to the left after we get past all the wetlands and connecting back up to the existing line. So as we're doing that, we're going over the existing stream crossing, which appears to just be a bunch of uh, field stone sort of stream crossing where they just dumped a bunch of stones. 
we can't find a pipe. If there's any sort of culvert in there, it's either silted in, filled with debris, can't find it. So at the stream crossing, because we were touching it and going to be trenching across or through it, we decided to, you know, upgrade the existing stream crossing to a, a you know, a mass standard stream crossing guidelines, which is what is on the plan. It's a fairly wide stream. So we have, you know, three 48 inch pipes, you know, with the openness ratio calculations. And then the water line as it crosses that is, was going to go over the top of those those culverts just to make it easier to construct instead of digging it below the culverts at that point. And again, once we get past all the wetlands, we can turn and connect back up to the, the water main. Um, we could do the full water main replacement without installing the stream, the new culvert at the stream crossing. We've essentially put in the water line exactly the same way. There would just be no new culverts. Um, there, are, all of the wetland impacts are basically due to the installation of of the culverts. We have to dig up that existing stream crossing, drop in the new culverts, reshape the banks to conform to the new width of the pipes to get all the water to flow through the pipes. So. Benefits of putting in that, you know, compliant stream crossing may not outweigh the impacts associated with with doing it. This stream crossing and access road has existed existed this way for quite some time. Um, on the plans, we also show a a little dewatering area and a temporary sort of construction staging area. Access to the site at the start of construction is about a thousand feet down a 10 foot wide gravel access road with wetlands on either side and, and not a lot of room to maneuver construction vehicles and drop off equipment and, and the pipes for them to in, install the line. So that's the project in a, in a nutshell. Um, okay. Um... Stefania, had you forwarded your issues to the, these gentlemen? Yes, I have. Um, I'm wondering if they will be addressed. Uh, crafted a letter and sent it to you earlier. Um, should have received it. Um, let's see. Yeah, we set it around four o'clock. I can forward it to you again. Okay, yeah, I get out of the office at five four. So anything okay. after that I won't see. All right. Okay. So what I would suggest and also Mr. Holliman had some concerns, correct? Correct. So what I would do is forward it in Mr. Hollican's concerns as well as your own. The applicant can address those for the next meeting. And I think we should be in good shape by then, uh, depending upon what the answer is to the questions that are being asked. Um, board members, any questions? No questions, Mr. Chairman. No questions either, Mr. Chairman. No okay. All right. Hearing nobody else now, I have I have one question. This culvert that you're proposing is is this a wooded area? The wetland is a pretty. It's like a wet marsh. It's open. There are, there are some trees scattered around, but it's it's pretty open. I do actually. The reason I'm asking the question is 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 uh, I don't know how. Fast that Marshall Brook flows, uh, but if you're putting a COVID, the beavers are what my concern is. It's that's why I'm asking if it's a wooded area, you know, because um, they'll cut the trees down 
and, and block the COVID. Uh, is there any preventative measures from that happening? No. Um. Well, again, if it's just, if it's a field, I don't see an issue, but if it's a wooded area where the beaver can get his materials to build his house, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm not sure how the beaver would uh, move a tree branch for that. Um, I, I do have some photos I can share with you if you'd like to see some, if I can get this, share the screen. Well, the other question why you're, you're trying to share the screen was, are we replacing the eight inch line or the six inch line? The eight inch line. So the only line that's working now is the six inch? Yes, uh, Roger might have some better insight on, on that. So this is a view looking to the, the west you see the oh, over there. So you have the stream right here and, and the bubbling up area is somewhere over here that's further to the south just past that that stream so again the bubbling area is somewhere in this reach uh, and that's looking in the the other side of the road and, and wetland area. So again, I'm just going to get back to the, the thing is, are we going to do anything to prevent this cover from being blocked? And now this is going to be maintained by the state, true? Correct. Okay, so uh, it wouldn't be the Tewksbury DPW unblocking culverts or anything else like that. Correct. Okay. That was actually my major concern was if, if the town had to uh, maintain, but the state is going to be responsible for that COVID, correct? Correct. The, the state, okay. uh, the Pittsburgh Hospital is uh, maintaining the road and access and facilities. All right. I just want to make sure that we don't have any more strain on our DPW than we need. Now, if you gentlemen can address Stefania's letter, you said you addressed her letter later to, earlier today, but Stefania, did you put Mr. Hardiman's comments in, in your letter? I forwarded uh, the email from him to them. Okay, so. They have so, those as well. Yeah, we, we, we addressed them as well. Okay, so when you get in the office tomorrow, could you forward the members, um, what the response was so by the next meeting uh we have some information on on what the response was to those questions or those issues yes all right any comments from anybody else hearing none uh brian nobody's on the phone correct no callers okay uh so gentlemen would you like to continue to our next meeting or would you need uh, more time for something Uh, I, we, we, I don't believe we need any more, any more time. I think we should just continue it to, to the next meeting. Okay. Um, and with any luck, maybe, maybe since you guys work for the state, you might get a little influence on the DEP number filing. Check out the doubt, but. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to make a motion um, to continue the public hearing to our next meeting of March 10th. Is that correct, Stefania? It must be March 10th. I think I remember March 10th. Okay, uh, 2021. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Um, Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sh uh, Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Mr. Sheehan. Aye. I was unmuted. Oh. Uh, Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. Chair.
Make sure you vote aye as well, gentlemen. We'll see you at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right, that's going up there. All right. Next is uh, this was. We don't need that one. Uh, that I don't need. All right. All right. Next is old business. Any old business? Henry none. Any new business? And I do have some new business. Um, and it's an email that I received from Mr. Montori today. And I'm going to have to read it off my telephone. Because if I go to my email on this computer that I'm using for this meeting, you'll be lost. <laughs> okay. All right. This this is a uh, email I received from Mr. Montori. Uh, and it's a Word document that came from... Jane Wellman, one of the selectmen in regards to the uh, the current bylaws, and I'll read it to you so you can have answers the next meeting if you want to make changes. It says, Dear Town Meeting, uh, Dear Town of Tewksbury Committees, uh, I am reaching out to you as we begin work with the General Bylaw Committee in an effort to secure your insights and recommendations for bylaws that impact the work of your committee and may need some adjustment, amendments, and revisions, etc. The committee will review a slate of bylaws, a slate of bylaws we have, and work on improving them as needed. And weigh the recommendations from committee chairs is substantial. If you feel our current bylaws are deficient. Uh, and we need new bylaws. That information is helpful as well. Please take the time to review with your committee members in those areas that need impact your team. I am interested in eventually scheduling a virtual working session with you to go over the recommendations by your committee, understand how the current bylaws impact your efforts, and how changes may improve your committee's services to the community at large. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or comments. So. My suggestion would be if you go on the town website and you go under uh, find it fast, the very last item on the thing, or it's close to the last item, is, is wetlands. You just click on that and the conservation bylaws will come up. My suggestion would be just to read through the bylaws. If you think something should be changed or something should be added, write it down and at our next meeting, we'll have a discussion at the end of the meeting under new business. Does that sound fair enough? Sounds fine. Okay. Um, now, I'll, any... I'll say real quick, I'm quite close with one of the committee members, so I'm sure I'll have uh, quite a bit of information for you guys. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right. Um, any more new business? <coughs> Hearing none. Administrators reports. I don't have anything. And now we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have a second. Second. Mr. McMullen, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Ronan, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Mr. Sheehan, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Walsh, how do you vote? Aye. And chair votes aye as well. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you everybody. Bye.